to Imami Lex International, of which we have a few members here today, and the ex our exceptional speakers, Sayyid Ali Reza Rizvi, who's uh, come up from down south, uh, um, and also the esteemed doctors that we have today who are going to talk to us about our topic, stress. So, next. Uh, so just a brief background for those of you that don't know about the Edinburgh Amal Bay Society, also known as TEAS, which is great for um, refreshment time as well. Uh, it's a charity, um, and what, what uh, the charity tries to achieve is authentic Islamic education and support for the Edinburgh community. Obviously, we're, we're going out with that with, with technology, using um, Facebook and the internet in order to let everybody else know in the UK what we do and also um, a lot of the lectures are put online so people can go back and, and uh, listen to the lectures that are given. Um, try and give monthly lectures and workshops in English and also um, set up weekly English in Islamic classes for children, children aged 5 to 16. And if any of you would like to join the group or find out a bit more then you can always email on this email address also go to the website which is EdinburghAllenBaySociety.org You can also go and check that if you wish at any point to find out a bit more. So, a bit more about Edinburgh Allen Bay, how they've expanded, they fought in uh, a sister's wing. Uh, and this uh, group of ladies um, holds events, functions and out 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 outings. Uh, they also have social activities for families, children and uh, more of our elderly population the age of 60. We've had uh, a quite a few outings. If you just go to the next slide. This is um, an outing that happened earlier this year to the National Museum of Scotland. I don't think you can really see the, the picture on the right hand side where the uh, some of the members that are in here are on there. Next one, next one. This was to the zoo. Um, I think it happened towards the end of last year. The next picture. And this is my nephew that we tried to leave in the zoo. No, he's going to call me after this. Are you here? Yeah, one of them is there anyway. <laughs> next step. And um, just last last week, uh, um, uh, an event that happened at Dynamica. So, you know, lots of things for the community to do, to get involved, uh, to feel part of a family and, and supported so everybody gets to know each other and everybody has a support structure. It's a really good thing to get involved with. Yeah. The other thing that's happened um, last year and the year before that, I think, was um, in conjunction with the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service and the Islamic Community Society, which is a group based in London, uh, there was a, a campaign or an event for uh, uh, blood donations, which is nationwide, in fact, it happens in quite a few cities. Um, and obviously the group had uh, been a great platform to, to, to start that here. And it's in the name of Imam Hussein al-Islam, who was martyred, as you will know, most of you will know, um, in the place of Karbala, and he's the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, it's really um, an opportunity to inform the community and uh, ethnic minorities who don't know about giving blood. It's very, very important. Uh, blood is a, a really important thing for, for doctors and patients to, to, to receive because they, there's such a shortage. And ethnic minorities, Pakistanis, Africans, Afro-Caribbean, a lot of, a lot of us don't uh, get involved with these things, maybe because they don't understand the basis for all of these things, they don't understand the requirements, so it's, it's again a great platform for people to understand a bit more why blood is so important to give, and also giving the name of Imam Hussein is uh, one of the biggest things you can do. So, next slide. This was the um, uh, end of last year, again, some of the community members um, uh, that were there. Um, the next slide. Another, another thing that, um, uh, that started recently is uh, the Mixed Martial Arts and Fitness class, which is a, a class uh, for males over the age of 16. It's free of charge. It's held in this building here on Wednesdays between 7 to 9 p.m. And um, if you go to the next slide, it's uh, done by Abbas Sheikh. Do you want to stand up, Abbas? You run away. Drag right him back there. Uh, he's the uh, he's the head coach for uh, Zulfikar. Uh, his group is Zulfikar Mixed Martial Academy, and uh, as um, he's getting beaten up right at the bottom there, that's inside. 
at, at the end, I think, the key is mentioned. <laughs> Next. Uh, yeah, so as you all know, we're a charity based organization, and you know, these, uh, these events and uh, programs that are held are only by donations that are given, so it would be very good if you're able to give. If not, don't worry that there'll be some something coming around to, um, if you're able to give some donations for the group, that would be great. Right. So a few house rules before I finish. Um, uh, just for all of you to know, in the event of a fire, uh, make for the exits. Make for the exits. I feel like a, uh, one of those people on the aeroplane. Make for the exits right from the back. There's a door. You go out right outside. And apparently there's a door just behind here as well. So if there is a fire, either go this way, behind these, um, these posters, or right outside by the main door. Toilets are just to uh, the left of the entrance there. So if you wish to go, you can. Uh, obviously, mobiles, if you can either put them on silent or vibrate, that would be great because otherwise it will disturb the speakers. And at the back and on your seats, I think there's some feedback forms, so if you feel there's anything we can improve on, then please let us know. Um, if you want to become a member, more than welcome, please put me down your address and, and email address uh, legibly so people can put that onto the database and you'll be informed about all the events. And as I mentioned, any comments or suggestions would be uh, valuable how we can improve this um, uh, event further for future reference. Next slide. This is the website, uh, so you can always have a look at it. And what I'm going to do is hand you over to Dr. Messi, uh, who's uh, part of the Money Medics International, and introduce what we're going to be talking about. Which is great. Thank you. Um. Assalamu alaikum, uh, good afternoon and welcome. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, Zishan did not introduce himself properly. He's actually Mr. Zishan's shape, FRCS Plastics. And um, I'm an orthopedic surgeon. I have to say that usually an orthopedic surgeon hands on to a plastic surgeon because they've made a mess or haven't been able to cope with it. It's been the other way around today. So thank you very much, Zishan. Thank you very much, everybody. I'd like to say a few words about Imamia Medics International. It's a platform of doctors and healthcare professionals from across the world. It was formed in 1995, and it's based on the premise of a verse from the Quran, which says, whoever saved the life of one, it shall be as if he saved, it, he saved the life of mankind. So it's got a very peaceful platform on which the whole activity of this organization is based. Could I have the next slide, please? So it's a United Nations accredited NGO, it was started in 1994 in New Jersey, and in 1995, it opened its first chapter here in London. In, um, and since then, the chapter in the United States has gone from strength to strength, and we're looking to build on that platform here in the United Kingdom. It provides medical relief activities in cases of emergencies, and more recently it has been involved in Haiti, um, the earthquake and floods in Pakistan, um, had a great deal of contribution from Mamia Medics International. There are major professional interactions across the world, and could I have the next slide please, and as you will see, it has a presence across um, all these continents that are marked out in stars. And I have the great privilege, next slide please, of being in Iraq late last year, where Mamia Medics International has been providing a service at the world's largest peaceful gathering, and that gathering brings together 23 million people from across the world. Please do Google Karbala and you will see for yourself what the place is. It is uh, a city based around the shrines of Imam Hussein, the grandson of Prophet Muhammad, and his brother, um, Hazrat Abbas. But 72 people laid down their lives whilst trying to defend themselves against and the community against oppression. So, uh, Imamia Medics International provides a service there for all the pilgrims because the Iraqi doctors actually have to be in their hospitals, so they don't have spare capacity to deal with the extra pilgrims. So 75 of us went across last year and provided a clinic which saw, believe it or not, 20,000 people. Now, an average A&E in Scotland will see between two and 500 people. A big A&E 
will see 2,000 people. So we saw 20,000 people in the space of nine days. Most of them were minor ailments, but we did have emergencies that we transferred over to a major hospital after initial resuscitation. So I was part of that camp, and it was a huge privilege for me. Can we move on, please? Um, in fact, I'll take the bottom. Sorry, technical glitch, I'll keep talking. So, I had the huge privilege of being not just involved in the clinic, but I also helped out with doing some orthopedic surgery. Iraq, you have to remember, for 30 years has been in conflict. To begin with, it was against Iran, then after that, it had the first Gulf War, then there was um, internal conflicts, followed by a period in which it spent some time in isolation, followed by the second conflict, and then another internal conflict that sadly hasn't resolved. So, I was, I was fortunate enough to provide the, uh, the logistics, but also help out surgeons in uh, doing some major orthopedic procedures. And in all thanks to the training, but also the practice that I have here, I'm a consultant in the borders, so that helps, I suppose, being able to transfer those skills to Iraq. Apart from that, Imami Medics International runs uh, other programs which involve running clinics in India, Pakistan, but also in the United States. Now, it's interesting, you might ask why the United States. Don't forget, we are fortunate, we are privileged. We've got a health service that covers everybody. In the United States, a country of approximately 300 million, 10% of their population does not have health care cover. And whoever does have health care cover, they have different bands of health care cover. They don't have universal access to different types and different uh, grades of health care. So, they provide that sort of relief. In addition to that, they provide remote um, facilities, so they run webinars for doctors all across the world. They provide a service for doctors who newly arrived in the United States with their education to pass their licensing exams, but also help them get on to residencies. So that's a view of Karbala. You can't see the swarms of people over there, there, but I promise you it was a real crush. I wish I could put some photographs up there, but um, <coughs> photographs don't always do justice. So, example of the camp. Next slide, please. So, in addition to the activities that Mamiya Medics has, online activities, but also face-to-face um, -face activities, it provides the logistics through its professionals for again developing healthcare education in Iraq. So it's closely involved with the University of Kufa based around the city of Najaf. But apart from that, they also have a collaboration with the American University of Barbados and they're building uh, links, but also have their own people involving, involved in developing the curriculum. Can we get the next slide, please? And again. It has international conferences, but it also provides relief during the Hajj, because the Hajj, again, remember, is one of the world's largest gatherings. A healthcare system can only cope so much. It needs help from other places. Now, I'm going to finish off on the note that Imam Medics is not actually a platform for doctors belonging to a particular faith or subscribing to a particular ideology it welcomes people from all across the world, from any type of uh, background and um, there is a um, lot we can all do together. Now, I'd also like to say that being a doctor in the NHS, I don't face any dangers. I feel very secure. The last thing that comes across on my mind is somebody is going to attack me or I'm in danger. It happens very rarely. When it does happen, you see it in the press, but that's very rare. But in certain parts of the world, there has been danger for doctors. We've heard about reports from Syria. We've heard about reports from Bahrain about how doctors who are treating protesters can get into trouble. They're being persecuted. And in fact, when I was in the pilgrimage in Karbala, I did come across those doctors telling their stories. There was recently a report from Turkey where doctors treating protesters would have to register each case with the police. 
They have a case in Pakistan. Now, to talk a little bit more about that, I'd like to invite the, the UK coordinator for Imami Medics International, Dr. Wasi Heather, to say a few words um, and um, bring home a few facts that sometimes we can often forget. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mahima, for bringing your introduction about Imami Medics International. And thank you for you and Alemana Society for giving the opportunity second time to come in your city. And last time, uh, Dr. Shabi Zaidi uh, spoke about the medical Islamic ethics. It was a very uh, good lecture for the everybody, not only for the doctors. And uh, this time, we are talking about the stress. And Malana Ali Raza is the president of the uh, Shia Ulama uh, uh, Europe. And uh, Dr. Uh, Nadi Makhtar is here, he inshallah, he will talk about the stress. I'll give you a little bit of a uh, scenario about the different stress uh, which I come across and uh, especially I, I would like to discuss about the, the Hazara community in, in Pakistan. You know the, how many people have been killed in there. And 82 children, they are waiting for you for, to help for their education and their, their uh, accommodation. So inshallah, the Mawana is working as well and Mawana Medics uh, International is working for them to establish establishment of the schools and their food and you know uh, some other you know kind of help. The stress in Pakistan, they are, normally they everybody is suffering, but especially the Shia community is suffering a lot. And I'm telling you, the Yali Medics International suffered a lot in Pakistan and is still be suffering. Nearly more than 200 doctors have been killed. You can imagine the doctor is so important role of the in the community. And some confidential reports came uh, regarding the, uh, the killing of the doctors. Why are these people targeting the doctors? They said the doctors are very important in the community. If they provide the best health care, they give money as well, and they provide their intellectual thoughts as well. So they are targeting doctors. So many calls coming every month to me, and they are asking us to please arrange something for us to come out from the country. So you can imagine the, how much the stress the people, we, we can't imagine because we live in a very peaceful society with love and affection and harmony. But these people are suffering a lot. 2009, I went to uh, Iraq and I established one GP practice there. So we, I went out to, to buy some uh, stuff for the clinical setup. So I hit by the bomb. My, my, one of my colleagues, Dr. Hussain Rajav Sandhaza, who started Imami Medics International here in UK, he suffered some injuries as well. And uh, three bomb blasts happened at the same time, with a few minutes gap. And we luckily survived and we went to the hotel. After two years, uh, two, two hours time, I came back on the same street. And I saw that everything is cleared. People walking on the street. And I was surprised. Why are these people not having any fear of death? Just three bomb blasts happened, so many people died and injured. And building collapsed and everything is clean and people walking on the street. And I asked them, how do you how you people react with this type of events? And they said, we suffered a lot at the time of Saddam Hussein. So we are used to. And we, we are not having any fear to, to die for Karbala in this city. This is our target to achieve. So you can imagine how these communities suffering the, uh, the stress and overcoming of these problems. I used to read one poem when I was in the school. The poet climbed on the temple, top of the temple, to see the girl. And when he reached on the top, so he got the message, and one sound came, voice came, and said, go down again, and I am among the people. So the message is that, if you really want to see the God, yeah, you have to involve in the community. Do serve some work. One person can make a big change, and you can see, all over the world, is so many changes happening after the 9-11 events. Everywhere, drastic things happening. So as a community, you people are staying in Scotland. You are the part of the Scotland. You have to prove yourself that you are the best community can provide the good progress in Scotland. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, Dr. Vasi. I was at a meeting a couple of years ago, um, the Scottish Orthopaedic Consultants Meeting, where 
Professor Sir Harry Burns came and gave us a talk. It was a talk on the health of Scotland. And what he did was explore what the causes for premature death were in Scotland. Twenty years ago, Scotland used to enjoy a life expectancy that was above average amongst European nations, but recently that has declined. So Professor Burns, Professor Sir Harry Burns, set out to explore what the causes were. So he commissioned different studies, and through these studies he found out that Liverpool, Manchester and Glasgow had similar levels of deprivation, but Glasgow had a lower life expectancy. He went out to look further as to what the causes were for this low life expectancy. And he found that there weren't cancer and heart disease, as most people would think, fire stopping. There were alcohol, drug dependency, suicide, and homicide. So then he went through and decided to recruit participants to see what the stress levels are. And stress levels are measured by cortisol, a hormone. We found that in depressed areas, the level of cortisol was quite high. Then they looked further and they found that people with high cortisol, people with these levels of stress, belonged to communities which had been broken through deindustrialization, but also the removal of tenements and housing them in schemes. So they came to the conclusion that this cause of stress was from a lack of connectedness from a lack of being part of the community. Because the people in Manchester and Liverpool were shown, on an average, to be more socially interactive. They were going more often to the clubs, to the pubs, and socializing with people, whereas people in Glasgow were not. I sat there, orthopedic surgeon. What am I talking about public health? Anyway, I sat there and I thought, I live in the borders. I went to what's considered to be a remote area. And yet, I feel connected. I feel connected to the local people, but also to my own faith community. And I thought, what a wonderful message. So, I'm going to invite my colleague, Nabi Mahtar, MRCP and MRCP Neurology, who is a specialist registrar in neurology in Birmingham, who's come all the way up here to give us a talk on the medical aspects of stress. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm really thankful to IMI and the Elizabeth uh, Society for asking me to come over here. It's a very historic and beautiful city of uh, Edinburgh. And I'm really glad that uh, I've been asked to talk about uh, stress, which is um, one of my favorite topics in life. Uh, as well as in profession. Um, I must say that I'm very pleased and privileged that after my talk uh, we'll be listening to Molana Ali uh, and the whole idea of this talk is to prime your mind and prepare your mind for his lecture. At the outset uh, I should try and relax you uh, despite the topic is on stress, feel free to be relaxed and, and try because when the word stress comes, the other one takes you uh, to a stress level somehow or the other. So feel free and for the next 15, 20 minutes would be very informal talk. However, on the lighter note, I should stress the organizer a little uh, by saying that I'm not going to talk about that they would be, they were expecting me to talk about, that is the uh, medical side of, 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 of stress. For the reason I say that, this is quite academic and perhaps uh, not very practical uh, to this very practical and precious uh, need. Um, let's start uh, with the next slide, please. So basically, my talk would be on the four parts. The first part would be briefly about the medical aspect because they would not have smite me at the end if I could talk. The second, and I think the most important part, would be to try and change uh, your paradigm about stress. And that would be my main focus. 
then we will talk about some strategies, how to cope stress, and finally, if I can get a chance, uh, to talk about how to control the thought process, uh, which I think is very interesting. Now, just to set the theme and um, get the ball rolling, let's define stress. Uh, it's a basically a state of mind, which is a combination of thoughts and worries that have a negative effect on the body responses. So basically a state of mind. I will come to that in more detail in a short while. Now, the medical stress, there are four kinds of stress. I will just name it. Uh, you stress, this stress, hyper-stress uh, and hyper-stress. I'm not going to go into details of that because I think it's all academic. But what is relevant here is to talk about certain certain chemical compounds and this is, this is relevant. Whenever we are stressed, there are certain hormones which are released uh, in our bodies and in our mind. Uh, some of, the, I think there are, there are hundreds of them, I would just enlist them um, and two of them, norepinephrine and norepinephrine. Um, and the basic message is, if they are there for a longer period of time, uh, they are going to affect your brain, your heart, uh, your kidneys, and basically they are going to damage it. So the message for this slide is that stress, uh, this, this, uh, the stress is not caused by these hormones or chemical substances, they are just released by the stress uh, through our mind control and then it affects the body in a negative way. The next slide. Uh, do we need to talk about what are the signs of the stress? Not really. It's the feeling that all, everyone gets and perhaps we don't have to go there. But just, just to enlist some of them, that when you are under stress, you would have some apathy, anxiety, you may be depressed, and your mind will be fatigued. So, next slide, please. But this is this is crucial, and that was uh, Mehdi Bai was referring as well. Dr. Mehdi was referring to as well that the, it is it is well established that the stress is the major cause or a root cause of the most most of the health problems. So, if we talk about um, the heart attacks, if we talk about the strokes, uh, the worsening of diabetes, obesity, headaches, you name it. The stress is a major root cause of all, all of that. The list can continue, but the bottom line is that stress is bad. Stress causes premature death, full stop. So this is something which is serious, and we have to take it seriously as well. But how to deal with it is, is really the question. And I think the real talk starts here because this is what we, we are here to, uh, to talk about. Let, let's change the way we feel about stress. And what I want to highlight here is not an external thing. It's a, can I ask you to flip it again? So basically, what looks six, maybe a nine, is basically the paradigm, the way we look at it. So it's an internal phenomenon, stress of that. Um, the second, and I think the most important part, would be to try and change uh, your paradigm about stress. And that would be my main focus. Uh, then we will talk about some strategies, how to cope stress, and finally, if I can get a chance, uh, to talk about how to control the thought process, uh, which I think is very interesting. Now, just to set the theme and um, get the ball rolling, let's define stress. Uh, it's a basically a state of mind, which is a combination of thoughts and worries that have a negative effect on the body responses. So basically a state of mind. I will come to that in more detail in a short while. Now, the medical stress, there are four kinds of stress. I will just name it. Uh, you stress, this stress, hyper stress, uh, and high stress. I'm not going to go into details of that because I think it's all academic. But what is relevant here is to talk about certain certain chemical compounds, and this is this is relevant. Whenever we are stressed, there are certain hormones which are released uh, in our bodies and in our mind. Uh, some of, I think there are, there are hundreds of them. I would just enlist them 
and two of them, the epinephrine and norepinephrine. Um, and the basic message is, if they're there for a longer period of time, uh, they're going to affect your brain, your heart, uh, your kidneys, and basically they're going to damage it. So the message for this slide is that stress, uh, this, this, uh, the stress is not caused by these hormones or chemical substances, they are just released by the stress uh, through our mind control and then it affects the body in a negative way. The next slide. Uh, do we need to talk about what are the signs of the stress? Not really. It's a feeling that all everyone gets and perhaps we don't have to go there. But just, just to enlist some of them, that when you are under stress, you would have some apathy, anxiety, you may be depressed, and your mind will be fatigued. So, next slide, please. But this is this is crucial, and that was uh, Mehdi Bai was referring as well. Dr. Mehdi was referring to as well that the, it is it is well established that the stress is the major cause or a root cause of the most most of the health problems. So we talk about um, the heart attacks. If we talk about the strokes, uh, the worsening of diabetes, obesity, headaches, you name it. The stress is a major root cause of all, all of that. The list can continue, but the bottom line is that stress is bad. Stress causes premature death, full stop. So this is something which is serious, and we have to take it seriously as well. But how to deal with it is, is really the question. And I think the real talk starts here because this is what we, we are here to, uh, to talk about. Let, let's change the way we feel about stress. And what I want to highlight here is not an external thing. It's a, can I ask you to click it again? So basically, what looks six, maybe a nine, is basically the paradigm, the way we look at it. So it's an internal phenomenon. Stress is an internal phenomenon. Well, if I try and simplify stress, uh, although it's difficult, but let's put it on an equation and see if we can simplify stress a bit. It's a product or, uh, of two variables. Two variables of this equation. The first one, wrong time. Um, so it's basically a combination of product of two variables. The first one is the challenges or the problems uh, that we face in our life as we grow up, uh, based on facts and sometimes fiction. But not that it necessarily every challenge or every problem uh, is factual, it could be just fiction. And on the face of that challenges or problems, there is a mind response. And if the mind response is negative, we are going to get a, a, a state of mind which is harmful to us, and that's what we call stress. Now if I can draw your attention to, to this, on these variables. So, of these two, which we can change? Sometimes, yes, we can, we can modify our challenges of life or problems. On other occasions, we can't. But all of you would agree that this second variable is possible to change. It's a mind response. And I'll go get more details of that. Next slide, please. Keep clicking. So, go one. Click. Thank you. One more. Thank you. So, if, and I, 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 I think I devised a term which I call relaxed stress. What meaning that, and I apologize, but yes, this is an innovation to see and to try and convey my feeling, if you have a positive mind response to this external stimuli, then you may end up in a state of mind which is a relaxed stress. What I mean by that, there is stress, but without its ill effects, without its side effects. So you can monitor and you can produce that state of mind, and I'll talk about the next few slides about that, what I mean by that. Next slide, please. 
As we grow up, as we, uh, as we grow up on the ladder of responsibilities, the challenges grow as well. I, I, I don't think we need to go into details or specifics of whether they are financial, family, future, but just to generalize, some of them are general. We all face them and they are relevant to our life. Some are not really general. Uh, and if you go to the next slide. And one of the reasons I was thinking about it, and I was thinking, how is there a core issue here? And perhaps one of the reasons is that, as far as I say that's possibly, uh, probably relevant, but important reason stress that all of us have a mind list I do not have. Comparing ourselves, our resources, our status with the others. So a mind list, which is sometimes conscious, sometimes it is subconscious. But in our mind, in our, in our hearts, in our pockets, we have a list I do not have. Next slide, please. So how to deal with it? Is there a frame of mind? If we can, 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 can we deal with that frame of mind that I do not have list can be tackled? And I was thinking, and there could be a lot of examples, and I got an inspiration uh, from a philosophical message from our first Imam, Hazrat Ali. Uh, and I'm going to relate my talk to one of the very uh, famous narration. Uh, uh, next slide, please. One day, a man came to him and asked about uh, what are the dimensions he asked, what is my dimensions uh, of my capacities in this world, as well as my limitations? So what, he was asking Mullah, the Mullah Iqan, as we call him, the first Imam, what are my, uh, what are the boundaries of my capacities and my limitations? Then, then the Mullah asked him to stand up, and, which he did, and then he asked him to uh, take your one leg off the ground, which he did. And then Mora was a very asked him, now take your second leg off the ground. And he obviously couldn't. So the message is learned. What? So it, in Urdu we call it as the ikhtiar, that the service that one can have the control or the capacity a person have is being conveyed. Now, this philosophical message, if I can relate to my talk, yes, well, there, there are different messages. There's just one message that, that, that um, we can learn, but there are, there are perhaps two other messages that we can learn from that. It does say that we should face the challenges. We should learn and build up our skills, and we should try and face the challenges. But the problem, the problem arises when unusual fears or, 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 or fears of falls and failures take control of our mind. And that, at that time, the problem arises. The problem arises also when we become too wishful. We become, we have started to expect things uh, to, we have started to expect things in life which we can't have. And the problem arises with that as well. Now, based on that theory and that message of uh, Hazrat Ali, I have tried this psychological test or psychological exercise that I call a 10 second test. And this, I will try and help to change your paradigm. Next slide. So what I'm going to ask you to do this in these 10 seconds, you'll feel free to be a part of it. You don't have to if you feel uh, really distressed. What I would ask you to do in this 10 second test is to lift your dominant arm up. Not really now, I will just tell you. <laughs> your dominant arm up and feel your other arm is dead, is completely paralyzed. 
Um, and despite your effort that you're looking at your arm, you are able to lift it. Just for 10 seconds. Can we do it now? <laughs> While you're focusing on your arm, trying to lift that up, you're trying to move that up hard for 10 seconds. And despite your efforts, you can't move it. One, two, three. You're focusing, aren't you? Nine, ten. That's it. Thank you. Now, I call it a shock therapy. For those ten seconds, your focus, I hope that's your focus, was only to gain that arm back. You were focused to get your arm moving. You were not worried about your finances, you were not worried about anything in your life, but about your particular arm. Next slide, please. And I'm sure, next slide. So the message was, this is a frame of mind that you can have to deal with I do not have list. Because you do also have one list, which is I do have. You know how much this body arm costs? It costs millions. So your able body worth millions of pounds. You may look at it a different way. So that's one thing. You can do these tests when you feel that you have a stress, obviously, you can ask yourself to stand on one leg and see how precious the other leg is, or both legs are. Next slide. And I was, I was going to, um, I was on the plane from Birmingham to Edinburgh, and I was thinking that at this point, um, the most relevant verse of, of Quran that could be relevant here for my talk is that basically said that the man is forgetful about the blessings. When I was thinking about it, another thought came to my mind that I thought this is perhaps the most repeated verse in Quran. I when I landed a check, and that's right. The most repeated verse in Quran is 34 times is saying that people, the man, is forgetful what he has. This, and I feel a little ashamed about it for a while, but yes, most of the time, because of our, all the list that I have, I don't have, forget about so many things, to forget about, I do have list. Next slide, please. Um, but don't get me wrong, and I don't want me, what I'm not saying, that you should not be, you, uh, you should be complacent. You should not be. You should have high aims. You should set the standards of your bars high. But what I'm trying to say here is to stretch without straining. And I will explain what I mean by that. If I, well, if I use the analogy of a rope, uh, suggesting this is your mind state and being curved, uh, just a second, being curved, okay? <laughs> just being curved. Uh, and, in, and, and in a relaxed way, you can feel. So that's, you can visualize your mind state being in a relaxed state and being curved. Next slide. And when the stress comes, it stretches. It stretches and you can see there's a stretch and there's a straight. And the color is not very happy either. The next slide. And as it goes up, it becomes angry looking. So your mind is under stretch. Not only under stretch, but also under strain. And what I mean, or what I'm trying to achieve from this talk, is to have, and I'm sorry, is to have your imagination and your capacities stretched out, but without strain. So stretch your imagination, stretch your capacity, stretch to, uh, to, to fight with the challenges and the problems but this, at the same time, keeping uh, this your mind state without strength. 
with stretch but without strength, which I call relaxed rest. Next slide. Keep going. Well, <laughs> this is in Urdu. My father was a poet, and I, I, I first read out his this uh, uh, Urdu version and try and uh, translate in English. I, I would struggle, but I would say that. And he said, "Mes taraka adim is kadar sehba." मैं इस तरह का आदि हूँ इस कदर सहबा सकू मयसर हो तो तबीयत मेरी बहाल ना हो सकू मयसर हो तो तबीयत मेरी बहाल ना हो वॉट ही इज ट्राइंग टू कन्वे दट ही इज बिकम सो यूज टू ऑफ द लेवल्स ऑफ स्ट्रेस दैन ही रेली गेट्स अ टाइम टू रिलैक्स ही वुड नॉट एंजॉय बिकॉज सो गेट यूज टू ऑफ दिस ऑफ दिस स्ट्रेस ऑफ अ माइंड विच इज अ स्ट्रेस नेक्स्ट टाइम So what I, I, I mean that after a few minutes I need to rush through that. Um, what I think is that we another thing I would suggest that you know whenever you feel under stress and you feel that your mind rope is stressed, um, visualize a stressometer in your head. Visualize a uh, a meter I call it stressometer in your mind and see where the levels are. Is it green? Is it orange or is it red? And, and I'm sure I have done it myself. You know, a car passing you very quickly, and then a sense of reaction, and then you're stressed. People being rude, all those things happen in daily life, and sometimes we, not knowing, we get that fear, visualize that stress in your your mind, and see if it is going in that direction. Try and get it down, and I'm sure you will do it. Once you get an intent, uh, intentional effort, you will do that. You will get that. Next slide, please. And that's what I can relax stress. Um, so what I mean by that is meaning it. Don't lose your focus. Eagle eye, focus, but not stress. Next slide. Well, I'm going to the very last slide, few slides of it. I think the mind is a thinking machine. So mind is born to think. In your life, there's not a single moment passes where you're not thinking, intentionally or unintentionally. Mind. Will be thinking about something, and even if you're sleeping, subconscious mind does think. So if you don't give any directions or topic to your mind, a mind will pick up, will generate its own topic. And exceptions do exist. However, most of the time, it's not most of the pleasant or creative topic the mind chooses. Thought horses. Ah, I teach my children um, to think that thoughts are like horses. And I simplify for them uh, that they are black horses and they are white horses. They might be grey horses as well. Bad means bad. Uh, black means bad horses. And I tell you, they run very fast, and they take you to the very long distances before you even realise what distance, what time has been lost by just just riding those horses. What I'm trying to say is that sometimes you need to audit. You need to think about. Which horse you're riding, and sometimes you don't do it. We just forget, and we realize what the time has gone. The other analogy I use is the mind is like a room. You don't, or a house. You don't let anybody trespassing your house or a room without your permission. So when the thoughts knock at your door, you should be the person who should give yes or no to that particular thought. You should not let your mind. By thoughts which are trespassing. The last thing is, I'm, I'm, I'm finishing now. Um, how many years we live in our lives? Sixty, seventy, eighty. Well, our community is less than that, obviously. Um, half of the time we we uh, spend sleeping. The rest is perhaps working in leisure hours. Very little. Is left to be created, and I think we should not waste that creative time for this place. At the end, I will just finish with my own couplet, which is in Urdu. I'm not going to translate that; it's just for the rest of it. And this is my disclosure as well: that na shaye na sukhanwar na inka tawa na shaye na sukhanwar na inka tawa pakat unse. चंद लफ्जों की 
خیرات لیتے ہیں ہم تو بس گدائے شہر علم ہے نبی در علم سے علم کی رکاب لیتے ہیں